Hey everyone and welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt and it's the end of the year. This is probably my last video of 2020 and I wanted to spend today looking at 10 of the paid apps and services that I use that I think I get the most value out of. Now, I may do a follow-up um, later about free apps that I use that I get tons of things out of, but you know, it's the holidays, you may be getting gift cards or cash or something uh, as a gift, and you may be looking at what can I do to be more productive? What tools can I get that are gonna help me in the new year do all those new year's resolutions and everything? And so here are 10 apps and services that I am getting tons of use out of today, and I think you might as well. So first up is the app Things. And so Things is a task manager. It's for iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. And so it's not everywhere. It's not on Windows, it's not on Android. If you are on those platforms, you have no options because there's no web app, there's no API. Uh, you can mail things to it, but you really need the app on one of those devices. Additionally, it's paid up front, uh, which is great once you pay that amount because then it's free. I've been using it effectively for free for a couple years now. Um, Things is $50 for the Mac, it's $20 for the iPad, and $10 for the iPhone. Now I know not everybody's a fan of this uh, payment model, but it works pretty great. And again, once you pay it, it pays for itself. Like to do as premium is $10 a month. Uh, that's eight months, right, of to do as, to do as premium, and you get this for years. You get it forever, basically. You get free access to their Things cloud service. So. It's a lot up front, but I think it's really worth it in the long run because you're not paying for your task manager, which I think is really great. What I love about Things is that it really works well with the GTD methodology. So if you follow that with like an inbox and an offloading your brain and like separating things into categories um, and everything, I think it works wonderfully. I think it works really well with that. It looks beautiful. Obviously, if you know anything about Things, you know that it's a beautiful looking app. And so that's my first pick for a paid app that I think is really, really worth it. Next up is an app for the Mac only that I use to record a lot of episodes of this uh, channel right here. Uh, so it is an app called ScreenFlow. It is a way to record your Mac screen. So you can record either a section of it or the whole screen all at once. And then it's a video editor as well. So you can use it exclusively as a video editor. It's not perfect for that, but I think it does a really good job with animations. The thing that I think makes ScreenFlow unique is the way it handles animations, I think, in a different way than a lot of other apps. Like a lot of other apps like Premiere and Final Cut, you're gonna be setting keyframes and you're gonna be manually like setting like ease in and out, like timelines and everything. And like it's it's much more rigid, I feel like. Whereas ScreenFlow makes it incredibly easy to make animations of video, of images, of text, like of all this stuff, super simply. You can change them without like throwing everything out of whack. <laughs> like you're not grabbing specific keyframes from the timeline and kind of like selecting them all, dragging them around and like realigning everything. You just drag the little transition thing effectively, move it over and you're done. It's a revelation, <laughs> frankly, in terms of uh, animating things on screen. I absolutely love it. Um, again, the screen recording is great. It has some stuff that lets you like identify clicks and keystrokes and everything. So you can do that. You can customize a lot of this to exactly your liking. It's like $80 or $100 or something. They put out a new paid upgrade every couple years. It's wonderful. I buy it every single time and it's super, super nice. Then we have an app for reading your favorite websites all at once, and that's Reader. So Reader is an RSS reader. Uh, it runs on all Apple's platforms, so iPhones, iPads, and Macs, and it is great. <laughs> it's a paid upfront app. Uh, so you pay a couple bucks up front and you get it on iPhone and Ma iPad. Um, I don't actually know if it's a universal on Mac as well. Um, I don't think it is, but it's a couple bucks on each platform. Again, no month to month fees for it. Uh, and then you get to use it forever and you can save all your websites in there. I think the UI is beautiful. I think it's both beautiful and fast, which I think a lot of RSS readers are either efficient um, or they're beautiful. And this is, I think, the one that meshes both of those really well together. I can get through my feeds quickly. It syncs with basically every RSS service out there. Uh, it also has its own service. So if you don't want to pay for an external service, um, I personally use Ino Reader for that. Uh, it syncs with Feedly. It syncs with basically every other big reader out there. Um, Feedbin is another big one amongst uh, nerds like me, <laughs> but it syncs with all of those. And then if you want, you just want to sync with a reader across your devices, uh, there's a reader sync service as well that runs on iCloud and is totally free. The next one I want to talk about is Apple One. Now, Apple One is kind of a different one, I guess, from the rest. Uh, it's a bundle. It's from the biggest company in the world, arguably. Um, but it's really a really great value if you use a bunch of Apple services already. So it comes with Apple News Plus, Apple Music. Uh, it comes with a terabyte of iCloud storage. It comes with Fitness Plus. Um, it comes with 
something else that I can't remember, but I'll throw on screen right now, <laughs> Apple TV Plus. Um, and so basically, if you are already paying for most of those, uh, you're gonna be either breaking even or even coming out ahead um, by getting this. And so if you're really into the Apple ecosystem, I really think you should look at Apple One. Um, Fitness Plus just launched and is part of the Apple One Plus bundle or whatever, um, the $30 one. And for me, that's been really nice. I've never actually used one of those. I've done it two days now. Um, I hope I'm looking very fit because of it, but <laughs> I, uh, I, I think it's really nice to just have all of the Apple things and not have to worry about kind of uh, paying for each one individually and everything. Uh, if you don't use Apple services, then this won't be a big thing for you, but if you are paying for a few of Apple services, it might be worth taking a look at. Next up is my Adobe Photography uh, Creative Cloud subscription. And so this is a $10 a month subscription you pay to Adobe, and it gives you access to Photoshop and Lightroom across all of your devices. And I keep trying to get rid of the subscription. Like, I, I do not like paying 10 bucks a month effectively for Lightroom. I almost never use Photoshop. I'm effectively paying 10 bucks a month for Lightroom. Try as I might, I cannot find an app that's better than Lightroom for editing raw photos. I've tried Darkroom, I've tried other apps, I've tried like Pixelmator Photo, I've tried the Photos app. Like, if there's something out there, I wanna know it. <laughs> because while I think Lightroom is amazing and wonderful and absolutely the best for my needs, I'd love to save 10 bucks a month. So even if I can pay like $100 today for something um, and then I don't pay like a subscription fee for it, I'd love to have that. But Honestly, I can't find anything better, um, and my photos are too important to me to kind of feel like I'm compromising on my ability to edit them appropriately, so I keep paying for Lightroom. Uh, this is kind of the most begrudging one on the list, but yeah, if you have a better idea for what I can do for editing raw photos on iOS, Mac, and ideally Windows as well, um, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear this. Now, this next one is actually going back to Apple. And it's not a subscription service, um, but it's a service that you may not think about that often, and it's Apple Books. And so, Apple has a bookstore uh, that competes, I guess, with Audible and um, the Kindle stores are kind of the biggest competitors, both from Amazon. And I never think to go here. I never thought about going here before 2020. And I kind of uh, got like a free book or something at one point and got it there. And like, it's actually pretty great. Um, I don't do eBooks really, so I can't really speak to that much. But if you do audiobooks on Audible, I would check out Apple Books you're probably gonna pay more for it. Um, like, you, there's no subscription for it, there's no like credit system or anything, every book is just a dollar amount. Um, but if you can find books, like if you can find a book that's less than like 13 bucks or so uh, on Apple Books, it's cheaper than typically credits cost on Audible. So um, that's kind of the threshold I have. Like if it's $13 or less, I'll try to get it on Apple Books. If it's $13 or more on Apple Books, then I'll get it on Audible just because it's cheaper. But the Apple Books app is really nice. Like it's really, uh, it looks beautiful. It keeps up with all of Apple's trends and everything. Like it supported dark mode right from the start and all that. Uh, it just feels fresh. It feels good. Um, it does some clever stuff with like the uh, time remaining. It shows you based on your playback speed, how much time is remaining in every chapter, which is kind of cool. Uh, so instead of seeing like you have 43 minutes left and then uh, you doing the math, like, okay, I'm listening at 1.75 speed. That means it's going to take actually this long to listen. You don't have to do that. Apple Books will just tell you at this speed, this is how long this chapter is going to last. And little stuff like that is really cool. I would really check it out. Like if you can see like some, if you get some deals on books, maybe you could try one uh, around the holidays. That's a little cheaper uh, than normal, but I would recommend checking it out because I think it's better than most people give it credit for. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been working from home. Um, I've actually been recording videos here and working there <laughs> for uh, basically the entire year, ever since March at least. And I have been using an app called Dark Noise to create white noise effectively for myself while I'm working. And so early on, I was using its like coffee house sounds and kind of like other sounds to make it feel like I was with people um, because I was missing that, I guess. Uh, and I used to always go to like coffee houses and stuff and work on the weekends and stuff. And I lost that this year. And so this kind of gave me a little bit of that back. It also has basic white noise. It has a whole bunch of sounds. It has actually more sounds than you will ever use, but hopefully there's something there. There's stuff like, uh, like a, a tent camping while it's raining and stuff like it. There, there's stuff like that. There's thunderstorms, there's um, a crackling fire, there's a spaceship, there's an airplane, there's all sorts of noises in here. And the really cool thing is that in the 2.0 version that just released this year, they added the ability to kind of mix and match these sounds to create your own. So if you want to pretend you're on a spaceship in a coffee house, like in a, like a, like a 
sci-fi version of Starbucks in the, <laughs> like you're flying through space, you can do that. You can combine those, you can mix them to exactly how much value you want from each one. Um, really, really cool app. I actually know the developer personally, so this isn't sponsored or anything. I just wanted you to know the developer's a really good guy. It's a one-man operation. Uh, a couple bucks up front and you get the app forever. So really great deal there, Dark Noise. Then there's maybe my favorite new subscription of the year, and that's Hey Email. And so this is from Basecamp, uh, the makers of the Basecamp app. Uh, and so it's a new email service. Uh, it is a service entirely. Like it's email, it uses the HTTP or HSMT, whatever. It uses the email protocols. And so you can send email to anyone, you can get email from anyone, but you can't use the service with any other third-party app. So I can't like start using Hey as my email provider and then use Spark email or Apple mail or any of these like Outlook or anything like that. You have to use the Hey app. The good news is that in the year that it's had, I think it launched in either June or maybe May, somewhere around there, launched the summer. In the past six months, they've done tons of updates to the app. They've made the app really great. It's really reliable for me. I get notifications for exactly what I want. Um, I've made numerous videos about why I think Hey is a great app and great service. I recommend you check those out. And I just, yeah, I just love, love, love the service. It's $100 a year um, subscription, but for me, it's completely changed how I feel about email. It's completely made it something that I kind of hated and stressed me out a little bit into something that is totally manageable, totally enjoyable. I think the inbox concept of only certain things, people you designate get to go in there is great because anytime something comes in my inbox now, I'm excited because I know that I want it to be there. I've already said, like, you don't get to go into my inbox by default. Like by default, nobody gets to the inbox. You have to say they can go in there and once they do, it's just good stuff. <laughs> and so that's really nice. What I also like is the feed. The feed is kind of everything else that you've allowed in. And so you can just go through that list whenever you want. Uh, and it's basically like reading Twitter, kind of like you just kind of scroll through and you skip most things. And every once in a while something catches your eye and you can like say read more on that and expands the email and you can see everything. But it's really nice. There you have a paper trail feature, which I don't actually find that useful. It's not that important to me to have all my receipts in one place. But as a service in general, I think they've done a great job updating. They have widgets for the iOS 14 app. Uh, so their widgets are fantastic. That's actually a great way to use the feed because you can just have a feed on one of your screens and you just see as you scroll by your home screens and see if anything interesting popped in there. It's really great. I love Hey. And we're wrapping up now. There's two left. Uh, both of them are web services. The first one is Ino Reader, uh, which I mentioned earlier in the reader section. Uh, this is what I use for RSS syncing. This is basically just an RSS backend that syncs your feeds and so it effectively frees you up to use whatever apps you want. So if I want to use Reader on my iPhone, but I want to use Unread on my iPad, and I want to use something totally else on my Mac, I can do that. Or if I want to just, I'm at a random computer, I'm on Windows like I am back here, and I want to check my feeds, I can just go to inoreader.com and check my feeds, right? So it really frees me up to not be trapped, kind of the opposite of Hey, where using Hey means I'm trapped into using their app. Using inoreader as my RSS uh, service means I can use any RSS app out there that I want. And that's really nice for me. Um, it's a couple bucks a month. Uh, it's not that expensive. Uh, I think it's, I should have it. I'll put it on the screen. Um, but it's not that expensive. They have a couple different tiers based on what you want, but the tier I'm on gets me basically everything. I've got rules set up so I can see when certain things are mentioned. I can filter things. If I know like this one place posts this stupid post every Friday that I don't care about, um, I can like make a filter to make sure it's just auto archive for me. Um, if I want to see like when the big sites I follow mention me, which is, you know, the, the classic thing to do. I can set up a rule to like get a notification, an email notification, a push notification, whatever I want when that happens. It's a really great service. Um, I think it's fantastic. And for me, it's been the best RSS syncer out there. And then finally is Zapier. Uh, Zapier, Zapier, whatever. Um, it is a automation platform on the web. Uh, and basically it lets you connect all of your web services together and do things. So when something happens here, do this and then do this. And then if this happens, and then if there's like, there, you can do like conditional statements sometimes and stuff, it's really powerful. It's super powerful. It's kind of like if this, then that, which most people I think have used, um, but way more powerful, way more reliable. It's $25 a month, which is kind of absurd. Um, but I think the fact that I'm still paying for it every month, and even though I cringe every time I see the payment come out of my account, I think that speaks to how good it is. It's such a good service. It's so reliable. It's so powerful. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm able to connect anything together. Like some examples I have, 
are when I post a YouTube video. When I post this video, um, whenever it goes live on YouTube, I have it set up to send a tweet to the A Better Computer account. I have it set up to tweet from my personal account. I have it set to um, basically create a blog post for me. I have it set to remind myself to check the analytics and like do my to-do list uh, in things. Um, it's super powerful. Um, and that's like an elaborate one. Um, I also have ones that I um, basically save to pocket because I like the to save to pocket from iOS, um, links that I wanna read later, but I actually sometimes read them in Pinboard, and Pinboard is kind of my personal archive of everything um, that I read and look at online. And so I have a thing that says, whenever I save something to pocket, throw it in Pinboard as well. Uh, so there's some really simple stuff like that too. Um, there's a lot there that can be done, but yeah, it's 25 bucks a month. Uh, so if you have things in your life that you wanna automate um, and they are gonna make you more money, basically, like if they're going to make you more productive in a way that can let you do more work and get more stuff done, then I think it can be worth it. But you really have to need need that and really want that. Uh, so it's worth checking out. They have a free trial so you can try it out and see if it has any value for you. Um, but for me, it's provided a lot of value. And again, even though I cringe every time I see it and I kind of always think like, can I do this some other way? Is it really that painful for me to do these things manually? I always end up being like, yeah, it actually is worth it to me. So that is Zapier. Um, again, the most expensive thing on here, I think, at 25 bucks a month. But if you have a use for it, it's super powerful, super useful, super reliable. And that's it. Uh, those are 10 things that I pay for either upfront or on a monthly basis. Uh, and you know, some of these, like especially the ones up front, like I paid for things like two years ago. I paid for dark noise way back at the start of the year. And so it's not like I'm paying hundreds every month for these services. Um, it just kind of gets doled out here and there. And then um, especially these paid upfront ones are great because you buy them once then use them for years sometimes. And it's like when they release a new update, like sometimes you get it for free and that's wonderful. But like some of these that are so good, like they release an update, it's paid. And I'm like, yes, let me give you more money to keep you working, to keep you in business, to keep it um, kind of iterating on the service, this app that I love. So. Those are 10 things I like. I'd love to hear what other things uh, you are, you think are paid and totally worth it. Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, I'm not really looking to spend more money, but if you have some great ideas, uh, maybe alternatives to the things that I mentioned, I'd love to hear those. And again, the one that I'm really looking for is let me drop Adobe in 2021. Um, I really would love to see a way to edit raw photos with tons of power, with tons of flexibility across multiple platforms, ideally. Um, would love to have that. So let me know in the comments about that. But until then, until next year, I will see you on a better computer. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.